Hey everybody, welcome back to another War 3Z UK um, mod pack, uh, Horde Night. It's day 37, so it's eight days after the last one. That's what the ran I, I've got it on random Horde Nights, uh, six days apart with a random of one to three, so it can be anywhere from six to eight days. So this one was eight days from the last one. I was hoping it would be earlier because I was read, like really ready really early. So. Uh, we've just been kind of farting around. So I'm just going to take you for a quick tour of the base. I'm not doing anything for the day, but I'm going to take you for a quick tour of the base because this is going to be the last um, last day that I play in this particular game. So I've got the roof up here. Put a couple of spotlights down here uh, so you really be able to see uh, the zombies as they come in. Uh, at nighttime, this is really bright, so that's great. Um, Got the four blade traps back up and running. And I did what I said I was going to do. These um, um, electrical fences don't last the entire evening. So what I did was um, the first set of electrical fencing, the closest one to the uh, um, walkway, is hooked up with the blade traps. And that will be on all night. And once they die, I've got a second switch that activates the second set of, of traps that go across. So we'll be able to activate them, and then hopefully we'll have electrical fence for most of the night. I don't know. We'll see. Um, now, this looks like it's all steel. Most of this is steel. Like, all of the important stuff are steel. The blocks around the outside here, I just painted to look like steel. This reinforced concrete. Just wanted to make it all uniform, because I painted everything. Um, and uh, so that's the secondary building. I think that... Oh, let me get rid of these guys here first. Um, so yeah, that's the second building. I mean, it's not 100% fantastic, but it's okay. Uh, that's a pump jack that comes with the uh, War 3 ZUK mod. Um, we'll go down and check that in a minute. Now, this is basically just like a sniper tower. You can kind of sit up there at night if you got nothing else to do and just pick off zombies at a distance. Um, I don't know if we got a wandering horde through here or not, but it's unlikely. Now, we picked up this... Uh, Dragonov SVD sniper rifle, the last um, playthrough. I just finished sort of that uh, one quest line for the gunman and uh, picked up this r sniper rifle. This thing is brutal. With, a, with extended clip, it's got 18 rounds. And the damage right now, I've got it kind of... I've got four mods in it, so it's maxed out. It's 208. And then I've got... Um, because I've... I'll just show you my skills real, here real quick. Um, because I've maxed out Deadeye, um, Deadeye gives me 50% more damage. So that's like, what, 312 damage for the rifle. Um, and then because I've got um, my Hidden Strike maxed out as well. Uh, it says Sneak Attacks deal an extra 200%. But it's actually, well, I think it's actually 400%. So 208 at 400% is like... 800 damage sneak attack. So these guys go down fast. There's a rare instance where I'll hit one. It's usually the ferals or the radiated that they'll survive it. But for the most part, they go down in one shot uh, when you're sneaking. If you're not sneaking, if you get a headshot, great. But uh, I pretty much sneak with this all the time. It does devastating damage. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so that's my farm under there. Not, mu not much, but a little bit. I'm going to close this hatch. So these uh, HD generators, um, they don't use any power. They got a lot of power output, but use zero power. So I just leave the lights on all the time. There's no point turning them off. Um, so yeah, so this is the fighting platform. Things have changed slightly. Not much. Like I said, we've got the third switch down here for the, uh, the second set of uh, uh, wire fences. I've uh, got an SMG auto turret in here with 3,000 rounds facing straight down here. So we'll get some good work in tonight. Uh, and yes, I did check to see if I had this on 64 zombies or not. And it wasn't 64. It was 32. I think I left it that way because I was worried about lag. Uh, but we weren't getting any lag, so I cranked it up to 64 for this horde. So we got a uh, shotgun turret in here with... Uh, couple thousand rounds of ammo in it. I don't think that's, I mean, that hasn't been depleted yet uh, in any fight. Well, except for the very first night that I had it. 
which I didn't record, but um, but we're making more ammo here. Got 6,000 rounds for the uh, M60 and the AK that we'll be using tonight. I've also made a flamethrower with some flamer fuel, so we're going to be using that tonight as well. I should probably check to make sure this thing is loaded. It's pretty darn cool, i got to say. Yeah, that's loaded up. It's a weird loading animation, but that's fine. I don't have a lot of fuel for this because I don't know how well it's going to do, but I thought, what the hell, might as well make it, get it going. And uh, let's open these up. So we got lots of rounds for our shotgun too. So we're gonna, I'm gonna take you on a tour to the other side because I kind of finished the other base and I painted everything too, pretty much how I wanted it. So this rec represents ground level. So that's right at ground. This is one block above. This is regular ground level. So we can see how far down we are. I just kind of decorated this room a little bit. There's nothing in these things, but they're just decorations. We'll be coming back here. Added some pipes. I bought these from the trader. The one thing I can't find is the T section pipes because I wanted to add a couple of, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, hatches. Now, I was going to make this go a lot further, but I just kind of gave up. I was going to have it as a final, like an exit. I can put my motorcycle down here and exit up that way, but I gave up. Uh, same with having the, um, the uh, truck elevator. I got it built, but I never actually put it into play. So this is the uh, second building. This is some, kind of the main floor. This is like, I guess technically the fighting floor. We've got guys out here. So I got four doors, one on each side that opens to a small platform. This one's the biggest one because I was going to actually put a, um, a building out here with, um, like have it kind of go up a ramp and then a drawbridge and then have my vehicles in there and then a drawbridge over to here. But it's outside my land claim block. So I didn't really feel like doing it in case I screwed some stuff up. I didn't want to have to... Um, didn't want to have to lose the resources on it so and then I just figured I don't, I don't really need it so I just kind of gave up on it um, once again this has got its own uh, generator over here now this generator powers all of the lights that kind of this like I added a fence which I'll show you in a little bit around the entire trader here just like one block on the like there's more blocks here on this side but on the other side there's one block out from the trader there's like lights on it that go all the way around that are hooked up to this this uh, generator. Um, yeah, kitchen area. I, I mean, I haven't done anything with anything in here yet, so it's just kind of, I'm going to leave it. But And then I made the mega vault because I could. I don't know how much uh, armor this thing's got, but I guess it's to defend against players. And the second floor, just kind of a sitting area with some lighting here. Um, this is concrete, but makes it look like uh, uh, iron. Now these are like the HD sto fuel storage crates, which is I think I think are kind of cool. Having the uh, like the mega vault and the fuel storage, I think it's pretty cool. Um, and I just add some voucher just to make kind of make it look like it's my water storage. Um, so that's that. Then I got spotlights here on this part because this is a bigger deck to shoot out from, and then on this side because this is a bigger deck to shoot out from. But I put a couple spotlights, of course, some fake air conditioners. And then in here are all the uh, VM uh, virtual... Um, for these things are basically virtual traders um, for the ones that I've completed. The only one I didn't complete was the melee quest for the uh, War 3 ZUK because I I'm honestly, I'm not going to be using like... A steel, like a, a iron club to kill zombies and then steel knuckles and I'm not going to bother with any of that stuff so I just kind of gave up on it um, but yeah you can buy stuff from this like you can from the trader each one's kind of got its own thing I guess I should have checked in here to see if there was any uh, elbows file cabinets yeah so I guess I got to pick some picked up some of the other decoration stuff you can get you can buy raw iron from in here too um, and then this one is like no, nothing special. This is the uh, vehicle one, I think. Um, so, I mean, it's got a few things. Mini bikes, bicycles, and it restocks the same as the trader. Oh, that's the mechanic, sorry. Uh, the gunman. I, I haven't found anything interesting in here. I haven't bothered buying anything. I, got, I think I, the only thing I bought from these is gunpowder. Like, you can buy, which is great, you can buy recipes to, for making um, all your seeds if you need to from here. Uh, and you're actually you can buy hop seed too. Nice. 
uh, and whatever else, your food recipes, and then the, the medic one, you can buy first aid kits and antibiotics and whatever else you need from here, cigars. So, but it requires you going through five levels of quests. Some of them are easier than others. I find the, uh, the medic one is the simplest one to get through. It requires the least amount of supplies, that is. So, I mean, you could hit up a, um, if you hit up a, a Poppin' Pills individual store, you can get everything you need, I think, in there for making everything you need. And then, of course, I got ammo storage crates. Now, originally, I was going to bring my ammo over here and split it up by type in, in each individual storage crate, but I kind of just kind of gave up. Um, I find that the War 3 ZUK mod, um, the end game gets relatively boring rel relatively quickly. It, it just becomes so easy once you get certain things. Anyway, up here, this is my uh, kind of my sniper tower where you can just set up here and shoot from a distance if you want. But this block here, this section, is kind of how I'm going to lay out my next um, um, playthrough in uh, Seven Days to Die. Um, now I bought two solar panels from the trader. Couldn't get these until I got um, until I got my uh, what's it called um, better barter up to max. But because with the War 3 ZUK mod, you get two skill points per level. Uh, you level up really quickly, and I think that's what kind of makes it boring. Because you like, if you just take your weapon skills, the zombies don't pose a threat at all, really. Um, I've, and I've even I've been playing this on insane difficulty right from the beginning. Uh, and because you, I, I started off with a Magnum and 200 rounds and a uh, snipe, or not, or a bolt action rifle, the hunter rifle and 200 rounds, and I had like no problem. You go to the trader, you just buy ammo, and, and you do quests to get to get money, get a forage early on so you can make ammo, and you never have to worry about doing melee ever. So um, yeah, that's kind of it. Um, so the things that I want to talk about the War 3 ZUK mod really briefly, then we'll bring on the Horde. So the mod itself, I think, is pretty good. Uh, I like the additional weapons, the um, these VM things for completing the quests. I, I find the quests, depending on what class you start off with, like you can, there's different classes, right? So there's the Builder class, Engineer class, Mechanic class, Gunman class, uh, Medic and Farmer. And then the other, the last one is the bruiser class, which is basically melee stuff, right? So I started off with, I think it was, wasn't gunman. There's another, maybe it was gunman. It's like hunter or something. It's the, I don't remember which one it is. You start off with a uh, 44 and a, and a um, bolt action rifle. You basically, at the beginning of the, uh, the mod pack, you choose which class you want to be. Each one gives you a bunch of starting items, which I think are great because it's it's tough right from the very beginning because there's mobs right at the very beginning. You don't get a break, right? So you got to be aware of that, um, and make make a couple of uh, make a couple of beds early on. Throw one down at your spawn and then keep one with you. And if you're being chased, drop it down real fast because there's some stuff that you can't kill early on, or it's increasingly difficult to kill early on. Um, but yeah, you're the three w kind of starting weapons. Well, you can start with a crossbow or a bow on some of them. Um, sporting rifle, the, um, what else? 44, SMG. And you get the schematic too, which is kind of nice. So that, that part is, I think is really cool starting off as a class. The class quests, um, are, can be really difficult. One of them, like the uh, mechanic one, um, I think it's a, it, for me it's a bit unbalanced because you have to collect so many resources to just to get past level one. Um, like as like when you start, uh, you basically get the uh, the quests for all of them, so you can do all all of the different quest ones. And the mechanic one is the in particular the most difficult. Now, once you get all the materials for the first one, it's like you know two hundred. Um, I think it's like 200 mechanical parts, 200 electrical parts, 500 forged iron, um, 250 forged steel, which can be a huge problem early on. Um, and I think it's like oil or duct tape or springs or something like that. I can't remember what it was. But you need to collect though. Like I think it's 100 oil. So you need to collect that. Now you can get it from wrenching cars and stuff, except for the steel. 
Forged iron you can make easily enough in a forge just by mining iron, but the steel is hard. And then once you get through that, then it's just making each of the vehicles. So the bicycle first, then the mini bike, then the is level three, the level four is the motorcycle, level five is the truck. So finishing those off are really easy. However, the pain in the butt is in order to get those to register, you have to actually, when it finishes in the workbench, you actually have to have the workbench opened up. Um, in order for it to count it being completed because I set them to go in the workbench originally came back and picked them up and the, the quest didn't advance I was like what the hell so you have to actually be in the workbench itself for um, for those quests to register but once you get through that it's it's relatively easy but like I said if you're gonna play this mod pack it's it's really interesting um, but once you get to a certain point um, I don't know it just becomes really easy you might find too that, like there's a, like a lot of new weapons like the flamethrower, and the one thing I didn't one I didn't get to, which I'm going to be getting to in my other series, the Chem Priest series, is the um, the uh, minigun. I haven't seen how this thing works yet. Uh, I tested the flamethrower; it's kind of interesting, but the minigun will be in my other series, so I'll I'll get one of those up and running for the Horde Knight in that series. It'll I'm kind of interested to see how that base is going to do because it's not set up like this one, so. I got a bunch of mines for tonight. I'm going to throw out. Um, so yeah, uh, the thing about this um, mod pack is, if you like to play the game for a long period of time and keep building and keep going, then it's. I think it's kind of a cool mod pack to go with because you know the HD gear. Um, so um, if we go to the tools here. So the HD chainsaw, HD auger work way better than the regular ones. Um, you know, I've got the uh, HD cement mixer, which mixes concrete a lot faster. Um, with the three motor upgrades, it works actually, I think it's almost four times as fast as a regular mixer. So you either make four mixers or one of these, or you make a couple of these and you just mix so fast. So I just started using these to make sand with. Um, and then of course you've got your three different work, you got your workbench. Uh, you get your weapons bench to make the different kinds of guns, which you have to find the schematics for in the game. I found almost everything. Um, not quite everything, but almost everything in the game by day 37. And I wasn't really actively looking all that much for it too, right? So uh, if you if you go crazy and you're like looting buildings like crazy, then it'll be easier to find. Then your HD forge, uh, which is great, but I think the only difference between this and a regular forge is it allows you to make forge titanium because the HD blade traps and some of the other HD items require um, forged titanium. Then you need that and forged brass taking it into the chem station. Then um, it makes congealed metal. Then you use the congealed metal to make other stuff with, which is, I think it's the steel polish, which gives you one more level of uh, improvement. Oops, not there, in here one more level of improvement um, up from steel so you can make things a lot harder and I don't have them out but the HD blade traps apparently last a lot longer like they've got 20,000 hit points as opposed to these guys which have got 2,000 so the HD blood blade traps will last all night but then you need to go ahead and make that the HD polish in order to repair them or the steel polish so it's not that hard it's just a lot of a bunch more steps to do it um, I haven't bothered. I mean, the Hordes Knight haven't been that difficult. Um, so this mod has done a lot right, you know, working fridge. Nice to have these uh, models in game of different items that you can use. Uh, working oven uh, and the working, like the oven and the fire. Now the, the thing about this is that this doesn't require wood. So you can make whatever you want to make in here and you don't have to use any resources to make it. Which I think is a little weird. I think if you're going to do it, um, what what they should have done is had it been electrical powered, so you just power it with electricity. I mean, not so much this. This should have, this should have stayed wood powered, but the stove and the fridge. Well, the fridge, I mean, you can't really do anything with, but the stove or working oven, you make that electricity powered somehow. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of different ammo for a lot of different guns, and unfortunately, some of them don't tell you what they take. Uh, so this one does, but then if you go down to 
what was it now yeah this one tells you too as well yeah 45 ACP but there's a couple that don't that's 50 BMG rounds um, what was it now oh the carbines I don't think tell you yeah they don't tell you um, what rounds they take the, that carbine and the well the M3 auto is obvi obvious is 45 ACP but I think it was this one and there's one other one the tactical AR it doesn't tell you so you got to kind of figure it out um, but there's only a there's only a certain number of rounds so just make one of each one and just go to load the weapon and it'll show you which one it re requires um, but yeah so um, they've also got upgraded junk turrets too which I think are kind of neat I've got the uh, the 50 millimeter one which is the biggest one now it says magazine size 95 but this thing's got like a hundred and something 173 um, fully loaded and that's with the clip extender so I'm not exactly sure what the math on that is but it fires 50 caliber ammo uh, range damage 110 so I'm interested to see because um, I don't think this tells you accurately so range damage is 52 for the turret I think but then it's plus 110 for the round so it might be 162 I don't know maybe something like that or maybe it's only 52 I don't know it doesn't seem like a lot um, but we're gonna throw this down tonight I don't have it up right now because I've only got a certain number of rounds for it because uh, these rounds are super expensive to make like if we go in here uh, some of the rounds are really expensive some of them aren't um, the BMG where are you here there you go um, yeah so three bullet tips three casings and six gunpowder the gunpowder is easy enough to get it's and the tips are easy enough to get it's the brass unless you melt down your dukes um, I can find well I mean that's not necessarily true once you get your once you get the once you have an HD wrench which I don't have here but I've got it over here somewhere yeah my HD wrench um, you can take apart cars real quick and I went through town ripped apart, apart a bunch of cars which by the way the cars respawn in this mod pack so you don't have to worry about ever not having cars to rip apart but I got 29 um, uh, 29 radiators which is at 250 a pop for brass it's actually pretty good so you can get brass really quickly in this game just by wrenching cars so yeah the things I think that respawning of cars birds nests also respawn stuff in them the loot in them so if you don't uh, break the birds nest apart it'll respawn loot um, that should be tied to whether or not you have like what your loot respawn is because I have my loot respawn off I don't have my, any loot respawning in this game um, but for some reason the cars keep appearing so I guess it's you know as far as if it was running on a server that's great it's fantastic if you're running it on a server um, but if you're playing a solo game it kind of breaks the immersion because like all of a sudden where do these cars come from and it makes you venture out less and less because like I've got a bunch of cars like there's three there there's one there and then there's three more across there two in the back parking lot and then there's the Navis game Marauders over there which has got six cars and then another car lot over there which has got like four cars in the lot plus a bunch of others around there in a bus so I mean I don't have to go anywhere beyond this small town in this building right here to get parts so it, it kind of like unless you're taking quests from the traders and actually going and doing stuff you don't really have to go very far to get resources which I think is part of the reason why I think the end game in here can get really boring so unless you actively go out and do building uh, raids like I did a uh, clear building on the um, the um, what was it called the uh, the towers what's it uh, I can't remember the name of the building now I'm actually going through it right now and um, well I've already gone through it but I'm playing it in uh, uh, my cam priest series I don't remember what the name of the building is but anyway um, I did a clear on that building just to kind of break things up a little bit and with this sniper rifle it is really it's sneak and shoot and you're done like I, I couldn't finish the clear because I couldn't find there was must have been a couple of zombies I couldn't find in there somewhere but I searched that top, top the building from top to bottom for two days and couldn't find them so I gave up um, it could have been something as stupid as a bird flying off too right so anyway but that just kind of broke things up a bit but honestly it's 
the end game for this mod pack unless you just like building um, and and being like a super overpowered character the end game really doesn't offer a lot even in with insane difficulty um, I think the zombies too I think the way what they thought was the the younger the zombies like the easier they are to kill the faster they move and then of course the longer the zombies have been around the rigor mortis is set in they're slower but they're much harder to kill I think that's what the thought was like the ferals but I think they all need to be moving at whatever rate you set them at so I've got the zombies on jog during the day but even ferals they don't even they don't there's no threat like there's just no threat so um, and I've yet to be overwhelmed like I've been trapped in corners and got my way out of no problem just change your just change your weapon around uh, this um, Desert Eagle Punisher is a really friggin great handgun uh, it's doesn't do as, as much damage as if you were using the Magnum but it's got 15 rounds instead of six um, so yeah it's better anyway I'm gonna leave it here and let's get to the Horde Knight so I just came down to get prepared by dropping some mines down I forgot to show you this so the pump jack this just kind of sits here and it just kind of mines random resources for you it's not a lot I mean that was one day and I got like 40 cobble and some stone and some brass so not a lot last time I got like 82 cobble and three glue so it's not a big deal uh, oh yeah so my fence here too it goes all the way around it's got barbed wire in it just so I can hear at night if there's zombies added a door a breaker here so that you know people with trucks can't ram into here the idea was to kind of set it up like you know this is like a independent uh, survivalist community so we got the uh, the lights that run all the way around the only sad part about this is that when you're up in the um, I got a lag spike there I wonder if we got a wandering horde all of a sudden I don't see anything um, when you're up there you can't these lights don't illuminate anything you have to actually be next to the lights for them to illuminate stuff which is kind of crappy but I mean it is what it is so you can see that the light is there the, the light is bright but you don't see any a, 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 a illumination cast on the ground at nighttime which is kind of crappy anyway I'm gonna get back inside and uh, or actually I'm gonna lay these landmines down and then get prepped for tonight All right, guys. Welcome to Day 37 Horde War 3 ZUK mod. I've got my mines laid out here, as you can see. I was just sitting on the roof here, uh, making sure no zombies stepped on them. There are other ones here, as well. There's some um, um, hubcap mines and stuff down here as well, and air filter mines. All the mines I could make. I threw them out because why not? Uh, it's nice that the HD land mines had the little red dot in the top, so you can actually see them. Anyway, let's get downstairs. Close this up down here all three doors are closed let's get our uh, junk turret down yeah kind of worried it's gonna hit my um, hit my things here but we'll see now I've got my bow down here because I've got a couple of um, I got a couple of uh, explosive um, arrows that I found in a uh, treasure cache so I'm going to use those and leave the SVD out for now bring the grenades down just in case they decide to attack below us but I get to use get to use these things first things first here just to let you folks know the trader Joel closing soon yeah don't, Joel I think or Bob I think you should be out of there I think you should have gone home by now he's actually going up into his uh, building up there all the lights are set up out here so you know I can, I can probably turn off my helmet light I got enough lights and I also threw a light down here I don't know if you can see it there's one down here so we got lots of light down there you can see what we're doing everywhere all right six minutes five minutes 64 zombies let's get this turned on all right wire ones are up Hopefully these, these back ones don't take any damage. I should have put plates here, but whatever. All right, some guys over there. 
They're into my barbed wire fence. I'm not gonna have to do anything today, I don't think. He's like, yeah, fuck this, I'm going home. right in here. Yeah, so the flamethrower, I mean, it's okay, I guess. It says it does 40 damage, but it's nice for effect, especially when you got volume zombies, like, these guys aren't dead in here. I don't even have to worry about those guys. How are you getting in here? All right, let's let's get serious. I got a drum magazine on this M60 now. Wow, look at all the whites. this guy. I got a feeling this thing's doing a lot of damage. What a kill zone this is. The birds see him coming right at me. Yeah, definitely more intense than the 32 horde. A lot of whites, man. Holy crap. We're on the last 75 rounds, but whatever. 
We're only like one six of the way in. My ammo is going down fast. Oh, I don't know. Won't do about a thousand rounds an hour. Shotgun too. Curry's doing some work now too. Yeah, I can definitely see the difference between this and um, 32. But I mean, with what I've done with this base, it should be no problem uh, keeping up. Oh, I got Pentecost now. Oh, whatever. Fix that after. It's a nice thing they added four different types of uh, diseases that you can get from the zombies. So you need to make special kits to be able to get rid of them. And the birds kind of give you that pentapox or whatever it is. Wow, look at this. There we go. Coming in out of there. I'm surprised that the uh, fence has been going this long. He says, and then the fence almost just stops. No, the second one's been going. It's going to come down to a door fight again. As long as that fence is still doing work. Come on. Yeah, 
that second blade crab is still going 100% pretty much. What the hell is that guy doing? Give me a Another demo coming. Ooh, that bird walked right into it. Okay, they're, they're through that first one. Second one going. Dance for me. If this was regular seven days to die, I would definitely not have these turrets where they are. Because hitting the demos like that, I'm making sure there's nobody at the store. Oh, yeah. My base would be wrecked by now. They would be on the other side facing the, the uh, demo's back. Come on, you guys. I don't know how many mines went off. I guess it just depends on where the zombies spawn in from. Yeah, we're almost halfway through the night, halfway through my ammo. It should be okay. I got my shotgun, my pistol. I got some flamer ammo left here. We're gonna break through these fences. I made a stink ton of uh, repair kits too. So this turret next to me has about, uh, I think it was a little over 3,000 3, rounds. So it should, should almost be out. Right, we got a bit of a reprise here. Let's just go ahead and repair this. And for me. This is slowing down a little bit. On fire. I'll die. As long as I make sure I tag them so that the uh, rat remover is on them. Kind of this guy's legs off. I do so little damage in this mod pack, and I'm not sure why that is. Funny, I, I, I think I burned through around 4,000 rounds last time. It should be, well, I'm about halfway through my ammo. I may have taken that first fence with him. Nope, they're still going. That'd be so disastrous if this was in the regular uh, seven days to die. On the regular seven days to die, it wouldn't be insane. I think that guy's 
leg off. I wouldn't be in insane mode, I'd be, um... I don't know, maybe second or third up from normal. All the demos are just blowing the bags off of the, uh... I made a ton of repair kits this time. to the way through the night. I'm glad I put that second set of barbed wire up. Yeah, I definitely would have made advantage of the polished, uh, polished steel. The demos were doing more damage. So that's another thing I guess the developers should look at is the demos doing more physical damage. I mean, if you're standing beside one when it goes off, it can pretty much kill you. But I guess if you're in the base building, I mean, you don't want the demos blowing the base up, right? So I get that. Uh, I saw a demo running there. There he is. Top of the night. We had our first top of the night. Second top. So I ran out of my two pentapods since that I got into the ward for completing the uh, medic quest, but I, I can make them easily upstairs. I kind of like that. It's, it's you gotta be careful about being hit because the uh, those diseases will kill you in one hour of real time. So if you're not careful and you get infected, it's gonna take you an hour to get the materials in order to make one. You need an HP first aid kit. You need, I think it's two blood bags and uh, two bandages. I don't know. I can't remember. You gotta make sure. Oh, two first aid kits. What is this? I think it's an HD first aid kit, a blood bag, and a first aid kit. And an HD first aid kit requires uh, blood bags and stuff to make. What are banging on here? Oh, what's up, guys? You guys decided you were giving up? Is that what it was? Sort that out. Once again, this building is a solid structure beneath me. They need to get through four, um, well, one layer of steel, three layers of reinforced concrete in order to get to the center, which is the ladder. And then I got a steel hatch on that, so the chances of them getting to that point are pretty small. Good at me, I saw that. I'm gonna fire them bananas at me. Are these guys still down here? Yeah, there's a few of them. I got 
stay on fire. How's this gun have left? 500 rounds. That's pretty good. I wonder if they give up. Get kind of gave up on that side. Well, it looks like they have. Have a couple of those guys. What the hell? What? couple rounds in the shotgun. I think he's like on fire. Oh, maybe he's like a special type of zombie that's actually always on fire. Back over here. I've got the blade traps running too, that's the crazy thing. I upped the zombies thinking that they were going to tear through everything and they're not even heading to the door. Now granted I was more repaired, I think this SMG turret and having this second line of uh, which is almost done but the night's almost over. Off now. Look at them all fighting to get up here. They seem a bit faster. So it's probably just me. Some of them are still really slow. What are they doing? Not a lot down there. I haven't made a pass here yet. Listen to them down there. Yeah, the white... Yeah, so I guess there is a mob that starts off on fire. Because I know there's dogs that run around that have a fire thing on them. Mobs increase their block damage, but then I don't know. Yeah, 
yeah, I see that truck that's just wrecking him over here. They really get to the door if I'm not covering that walkway, eh? Let's go downstairs. Oh, maybe not. There's a lot of them. The one thing about this mod is you don't mess around. If a zombie gets a hold of you, it does a lot of damage. But I got my armor maxed now. Like, my armor's maxed, right? So it's maxed out, and I've even got, like, armor buffers on the, mo on the armor. There's a screamer. Just like in every other... Just like in every other one we've played. That one's still working. Where is she? Oh, she's gonna die by SMG. Yeah, we're getting some lag here. these whites, they get a hold of you with that speed, you're in trouble. Wow, I didn't even see her get up here. Come on, Mo. Oh, you almost made it. Oh, he ran right into that. There's another screamer down there. There she is. Yeah, so... I think that's about it. Let's go turn these off. So this one can get turned off. That one can get turned off. And we should probably turn the blades off. Well, I think so. All right, we're going to check our ammo situation here. We got a couple of little stragglers coming in. So that just ran out. Shotgun turret had a couple thousand in it, and it's still got tons. All right, let's go uh, collect some fat loots here. Yeah, shorts and some coins. A little late to the party, but. One more guy. It was the triplets that showed up. Okay, keep this one out. Yeah, so they barely touched the mines. Well, it's not necessary. Well, yeah, they did. Barely touched the mines. I guess they were all coming from behind me. So far, a lot of crap. It's so easy to make money in this mod, too. That's the thing. Because you can carry so much stuff in your backpack. So a lot of good, I mean a lot of good, uh, or a good amount of drops tonight. The really only thing that I want is anything that's going to sell. Um, I hear somebody banging over there. Anything that's going to sell or ammo. I'll take the repair kits too. That way I can repair stuff before I sell it. Always make sure you repair it before you sell it because you make a lot more. 
All right, so not bad. I mean, I might make 20,000 maybe. No, maybe not. Well, once I repair some of this stuff, drop some modifier, like I dropped this into the helmet. The helmet's like, what, 1,700 plus this, like 2,500 for the helmet alone. This thing's 12. So, yeah, once it's, once it's all repaired. So, yeah, maybe, I don't know, a little bit anyway. Hey, what's up? She kind of gave up. She was part of the horde. She's like, I don't want any part of that. Still more than roaming around. This is a wandering horde. Looks to be. I got sneak damage on that guy. Yeah, it looks like it's a wandering horde. Like, this is just the AK, and even... Well, it's out of range. No, it's not. Even just the AK does a great job. Ah, right in my mind. Not that it matters anymore. Yeah, so I mean, if you like a mod pack that's, I mean, it's action packed early on and you're always like, you always got to be looking over your shoulder because you can die real quick in this. Um, but as far as the bases go, that was a, like, I mean, yeah, I was prepped for this one, but it wasn't really that difficult, I guess. If I had a second SMG turret up here and got rid of the shotgun turret and just converted all the shotgun ammo for SMG ammo. Put them both right here, they would never have gotten past here. Just sat there the whole night and shot. So, alright, I'm going to end this here, guys. This will be the last uh, War 3 Z um, video in this series. But uh, I'm going to finish up uh, Chem Priest. I still have the Horde Knight for there. So, keep an eye on that. There's going to be two more episodes first before that, and then there'll be the Horde Knight. So, keep an eye out for that. Hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Peace out.